Hello, this episode of the Sankofa Pan-African series will be celebrating the life of the legendary Mansa Musa. Musa Keita I is better known as Mansa Musa. He left huge footprints in the sands of time. Although not much is known about his um, early years, because some accounts um, believe he was the grandson of Sundiata Keita, others record him as the grand nephew of Sundiata. Mansa Musa Keita um, is also believed to have been the grandson of Abubaka Keita the first who was a nephew of Sundiata Keita, the founder of the Keita dynasty and the uh, empire of Mali. It was Sundiata Keita who established the territorial base of the empire and laid the foundations for its prosperity. Now, his given name, Musa's given name um, at birth, uh, was Musa, whilst Mansa is the Mandinka word for ruler or emperor. Musa Keita became the tenth ruler or Mansa of Mali in 1307. Prior to becoming Mansa of Mali, he served as deputy to Mansa Abubakar II who was his predecessor. Now, Mansa Abubakar II was an explorer who went missing when he went, uh, when he took a sea voyage to find the end of the Atlantic Ocean. Now, the empire which Mansa Musa inherited um, controlled territories that were rich in gold, salt and copper. Mali also monopolized trade between the north and interior of the African continent. Under Mansa Musa, under Mansa Musa's rule, the empire grew even wealthier. The reason why Mansa Musa is one of the best known African rulers is the wealth that he controlled as the emperor of what was most likely the wealthiest empire on earth during his reign. Now, during Manta Musa's uh, reign, Mali had an army of about a hundred thousand men, which included an armored cavalry of ten thousand horses. Mansa Musa doubled the territory which he inherited and maintained Mali's vast empire, which controlled lands um, covering the Gambia and Lower Senegal in the west. And in the north, the empire incorporated the entire length of the Western Sahara border region. In the south, the Boer region and the area which later became known as the Gold Coast. Mansa Musa was far-sighted and in order to administer the vast empire under him more effectively, he split it into provinces and appointed governors to administer them. Um, now, he also put in place proper record keeping uh, procedures and had records sent to the centralized government office in Niani, which was the capital. All of this attention to effective administration, as well as taxes um, on trade, firmer control of the gold and uh, copper mines, as well as tributes from the territories helped Mansa Musa to consolidate and increase the wealth of the empire. Now, the wealth that he controlled 
when compared to the rest of the world at that time, is best illustrated by the pilgrimage which he took, accompanied by his wife, Inari Kunati, to Mecca in 1324, during the 17th year of his reign. Reports show that his entourage to Mecca consisted of 60,000 men, including a personal retinue of 12,000 people, all dressed in brocade and silk. Mansa Musa, who rode on horseback, was directly preceded by 500 people, each of them carrying a gold adorned staff. The emperor was also accompanied by a baggage train comprising of 80 camels with each carrying 300 pounds of gold. It was during this pilgrimage to Mecca that the world became aware of the astonishing wealth of Mali. Arab chroniclers, both in Cairo where he stopped on his way to and from Mecca um, and in Mecca itself were so captivated by the procession that they reported about him in the most glowing terms. So while in Cairo, Mansa Musa and his caravan spent and gave away so much gold that the value of gold dropped causing inflation which Egypt did not recover from for the next 12 years. The accounts of Mansa Musa's stupendous wealth quickly reached Europe and a map called the Catalan Atlas, which was a, created in 1375 by Spanish cartographers depicts West Africa with an image of Mansa Musa sitting on a throne, holding his staff of office in one hand and in the other, a large gold nugget. As soon as the Catalan Atlas was published, European leaders started sponsoring so-called explorers to Africa with the sole purpose of finding the source of Mansa Musa's gold. Now, I know there are still people out there who even today are apologists for the colonization, the conquest and pillaging of the African continent. Such people claim that colonization was not all bad some even try to argue that Africa benefited from colonization. Let us pause and imagine the trajectory that Africa was on during the period of um, the great civilizations, empires and kingdoms, compared to the trajectory that Europe was on. Imagine if Africa's resources had not been Cutted a way to develop Europe and the Americas. And by resources, I don't just mean material resources, but also human resources. Imagine if we had been left alone by the Arabs who started the rape of the continent and the Europeans who perfected it. Imagine what the world would be like today. Back to Mansa Musa, some of the legacies which he left behind, in addition to the organization and the smooth administration of the empire, which I mentioned earlier, include architectural innovations in Gao, Timbuktu, Niani, and other parts of the empire. He also expanded trade and invested heavily in education by attracting eminent scholars who helped develop the Sankore Mosque into a university. Unlike modern day universities, 
the university founded in Timbuktu had no central um, campus or organization, but was made up of several independent schools and courses taught include uh, uh, courses that were taught there included anatomy, astronomy, anthropology, bot botany, evolution, medicine, surgery, physiology, uh, zoology, um, cartography, uh, geology, mathematics, physics, chemistry, philosophy, languages and linguistics, Islamic studies, um, geography, history, and various forms of art. It was a more comprehensive collection of courses than you could find in most European universities at the time. Anyway, thank you for being a part of this episode. Please subscribe if you haven't done so. Like us and please, please share our videos with your contacts. See you next time.